This four-part Kyrgyzstan video series is brought to you by Squarespace. These games are basically a showcase of nomadic culture, walking around, you could be dodging sheep, you could be dodging horses and people, all tribes of nomadic people from Mongolia all the way to Turkey attend these games every year. It started really as something for them, as a showcase to remember their nomadic heritage and culture and eventually developed into this massive international spectacle with more than 83 countries in attendance from the Philippines to France to um, random countries in South America. It's really a celebration of any tribe or culture, indigenous people that have, you know, been nomadic at one point in their life and bringing that back and showcasing it for the world to see. It's something quite special. To attend the World Nomad Games, you would need to land in the capital city of Bishkek and then drive or take a bus for the four hours to Chopanalta, where most people stay. It's spread over a whole week and the game locations are in the main city and a smaller venue in the Kirchen Valley, about 30 minutes away by car. Part of the official press corps. Um, it's all been a very interesting experience so far. Um, I think because it's the opening, it's we came here really early. The opening is until 8 p.m. tonight. All the press is confined to one area. When creating content like this, we usually go off on our own. But since this was an official event being attended by some presidents, we knew that security would be tight. And as such, we had to join the official press corps, which gave us great access to the games, but also provided some interesting moments. Was a showcase of culture. Aside from the parading of all the participating countries from Mongolian nomads to American cowboys, we were given the history of the nomadic culture that spans from Turkey to China through the Epic of Manas, one of the longest poems in the world, narrating the stories that built the nations of Central Asia. <laughs> The ceremony just ended. I'm freezing. Uh, I didn't understand much, but I'm pretty sure they were just explaining about the, the birth of the nomadic culture and, and different uh, types of tribes that you can find. Uh, some of the countries that were included were actually really surprising. Um, there was one Filipino guy in there, so we're going to try to figure out what he's actually competing in. That was really surprising.
Day two in Kuchin. We have a little bit of liberty today. We were able to take the car, picked up some new friends from the media. Let's go drink, let's be friends. And, that's yeah, great. and you're kind of like, you know, I'm not sure that that's going to seal the deal in friendship. Today's going to be a busy day. We're going to try to cover some of the competitive sports and get some of the ethno sports as well. Um, and maybe try out some of the challenges that they, they have laid out here in the yurt camps. Um, and hopefully there's some good food. This seems to kind of be the main attractions here to get the pictures. Yes? There's my friend Igo again. So in the morning you can walk around the camp, um, see the different training areas and they're practicing uh, the dances, the songs, the epics, the narration. So there's a bunch of other competitions happening rather than the physical ones or some intellectual ones, but there are also some dance and song ones. So we're in the Osh Ordo. People around here love singing and dancing as you can see. are a way of bringing people together, preserving traditional sports and eventually helping boost the tourism sector of the area. From a game resembling polo where a dead headless goat is used instead of a ball or eagle and hawk competitions where the birds need to perform various hunting tasks to wrestling forms from various countries. Yeah. This is called mass wrestling. It's so intense. Please! Like people are sniffing stuff before going there. Shouting, but it's like a two second match. You hold a stick, you hold as hard as you can, and whoever lets go loses. Yeah, we're just gonna go and have some fun. Let's 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 go and have some fun. It's something like you've never experienced and just signifies their importance. We don't usually hear much about Central Asia and it isn't yet a global tourism destination, but this region offers so many adventures that will surely scratch any traveler's itch. Just like with any festival, come with an open mind knowing that the organization will probably not be what you're used to. Imagine 10,000 people descending on a sleepy vacation lake town and all the logistics that are involved. The infrastructure is as ready as it can be for the time being, and with that come kinks. However, if you come with an open mind and an easygoing attitude that you should have while visiting places like these, you'll have a great time. One of my favorite experiences of the week was going around all the yurts that were set up in the gorge. Different nations took residence in them for the duration of the games and invited people to experience their own nomadic culture. From food to songs and dances, it all seemed so foreign to me, and it was a real pleasure to meet people from all over, so eager for you to have a bit of their dishes and just listen to their stories. You're filming it? Yep. What's I up, bro? I need 2,000. What? No, it's, it's official. Oh, it's official. shit. So what happened? Speeding. <laughs> Speeding ticket. Dude, the cops, when they stop here, it's the scariest thing ever. <laughs> Note to the wise, being a foreigner, never drive even one kilometer over the speed limit or you will be targeted. Coming from the Philippines and having lived in Russia for a couple of years, I was used to being stopped by cops for no apparent reason. I just didn't expect it to happen twice in one day. The guy this time was trying to ask me for our car documents, but obviously it's a rental car, so I gave him the contract, but to him that wasn't good enough. Um, so it felt like he was about to ask for something else um, until 
I told you to wear the, the, the media media pass and thank God that helped. I think during this period at least they're, they're lenient with this. We didn't do anything wrong. Um, but yeah, that was number two. <laughs> Strike two, brother. In the same day. Uh, yeah, thank God for these media passes or else I think it would have been a hell of a trip. This is probably one of the most eye-opening trips I've had in a while. It's easy to get stuck in our routine or to keep looking for similar experiences in our travels. It was refreshing to come to a place I knew nothing about and that doesn't have much written about it online. Curating a journey that is very open to impulses, itinerary changes, and an overall do-it-yourself attitude. Yes, there are some tour companies available, but I would just suggest grabbing a car, finding a generous guide, and driving off into the mountains. Hey guys, so as you know, this whole series was brought to you by Squarespace and I was so happy that they were on board for this because it was just a massive help in putting it together. And just to show you how easy Squarespace as a platform is to build a beautiful website, I'll be making a microsite where I'll be putting all the content from Kyrgyzstan, videos and photos included. That way there's just one link that you can direct yourself to if you want to learn about the country or eventually want to come visit this place. I've been using Squarespace for a while and what I love about it is that it has these beautiful award-winning design templates that are just really easy to use and if you're someone like me that doesn't necessarily have a very creative eye when it comes to building websites and just want to focus on content then they do that for you because they have these great designs and great templates their customer service is really amazing as well and for me the best thing I don't know if you've bought domains online before it can be quite a kind of process because sometimes you buy it from someone who's buying it from someone else at least in Squarespace it's really transparent and really straightforward Finally, you can do all of that on one platform. There's nothing to install, nothing to patch. Everything is there for you right away, so it's really easy to build. Since you're finally ready to build your website, all you have to do is go to squarespace.com slash you'll get 10% off your first purchase and also a free trial.